Hello and welcome to this Magellan Infrastructure Update. My name is Jennifer Herbert, Head of Listed Funds, and today I'm joined by Gerald Stack, Head of Infrastructure, and Offa Carliner, Portfolio Manager on the Infrastructure Fund. We'll be discussing macroeconomic themes playing out in the sector, results from the most recent reporting season, and also the Magellan Infrastructure Portfolio and how it's fared over the September quarter. Gerald, Offa, Welcome, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jen. Ofra, I might start by asking you the first question. Um, it's been a challenging quarter for the markets, particularly for long duration assets with the central banks increasing interest rates to try and curb um, inflation issues. We've just had a number of um, utility and transport stocks reporting. Are you sensing any stress in those companies? Uh, in a word, no. Um, if you think about where the stress would come from, it would come from two places, the operational level, so revenues and you know, operational costs, and the balance sheet, so inflation costs. Um, on the operational side, as we've discussed previously, the revenues are very linked to inflation. You're very protected across almost all the companies we invest in. So it's effectively a pass-through. We've seen some minor annoyances, I put it out, in terms of rather than stress. You know, on the cost sides, we've seen that ENA had slightly higher uh, energy costs, for example, but nothing that rises to the level of stress. So really nothing nothing material. Um, on the interest cost side or the balance sheet side, you have to remember that most of these companies have around sort of nine to 10 on average uh, years of debt locked in. So while debt prices are certainly increasing, um, it's gonna take a long time for that really to flow through. So there's no real stress in the short term for these companies at all. And Gerald, September was a challenging month for the, the portfolio. Um, perhaps you could provide some context around performance. Sure. Look, um, for infrastructure generally, no matter which fund or which index you want to look at, it was a very uh, tough period. In infrastructure indices, broadly speaking, each of the different indices and benchmarks have a slightly different uh, makeup, but they're broadly down around about 10% for the month. So it was a really tough month, and it, and it, it went that uh, that performance stretched across both utilities and infrastructure it was neither sector no neither part of our universe was immune to it so what was it about it was about the rise in interest rates we know that when interest rates change there, there's a potentially an impact upon the business and there's an impact upon the value of the businesses um, uh, if we think about infrastructure and utilities they provide an essential service typically in a monopoly construct and as a result they're regulated to protect the consumer at the end of the day but the regulation as an investor is your friend it means you've got very reliable financial performance and indeed the rise in interest rates and the rise in inflation we've seen over recent uh, periods doesn't really constitute a significant threat to these businesses the, the outlook for earnings for infrastructure and utilities business remains robust um, and the, the, none of the businesses that we look at that uh, uh, would be suggesting at the moment that they won't meet their long-term earnings goals at the moment. There may be some uh, uh, volatility on the way through, um, but, but they are all uh, remain optimistic about the outlook. And if we look at US utilities, for example, we would expect earnings growth of around about five to seven percent across the board for US utilities. And the and the rise of inflation, the rise of interest rates, doesn't put that at threat. So the fundamentals remain intact. Um, so that's the, the impact upon the businesses itself. If we then move to the impact upon value, well, we saw in that period, in that month, that uh, valuations got hit significantly. And we have seen this in the past. There's really been four, if we include that month, five times when interest rates have risen uh, significantly over about the last decade. The first was in uh, May, June of 2013, what's known as the taper tantrum. The second was upon the election of Donald Trump as president in the US in uh, late in, you know, November 2016. There was then the, uh, the passing, the approval of the uh, tax cuts by uh, the Trump administration. And each of those times, interest rates went up by about 1%. We then actually saw earlier this year in about February or March, rates went up around about that sort of mark. And then most recently, we've seen a pretty significant move up in interest rates. Now, in those first three occurrences, interest rates went up around about 1% and infrastructure generally fell sort of 5 to 10% through about, about a, a, an eight week period typically. Um, on the third occasion this year, interest rates went up and infrastructure actually went up and that took us a bit of it by surprise. But this time we've seen rates go up and infrastructure fall around about 10% in the month. So we've seen similar things. Um, but in, in the first three occurrences, what we did see was that infrastructure values quickly came back to what we would consider a, a fair value. They recovered that losses and then went on to um, essentially to continue to moving upwards over time. Um, uh, as I said, what we've seen in, in earlier on this year is you know, surprised us a little and we've been surprised on the other side by the sort of volatility of what we've seen in the most recent month. We remain convinced that the businesses are in, in very good order. 
and therefore we would expect uh, with the passage of time that um, the performance, the underlying investment performance will match that earnings performance. Ultimately, while in the short term, the share market is something of a popularity contest, in the long run, it's a cash flow weighing machine. And the cash flows that these businesses generate ha ha have not gone away. So yes, there's been something we would regard of a knee-jerk reaction to that rise in interest rates, but with the passage of time, we expect these businesses to continue to perform as we'd expect so. And uh, if we look actually over the course of the 12 months, Global equities over the last 12 months, if we take global equities as being the MSCI uh, Australian dollar hedged index, so like for like with our hedged fund, that's down around about 15 and a half, 16 per cent over those 12 months. And by comparison, uh, our fund's down about 4.7 per cent over that 12 month period. So um, we're not happy about the t that, that one month period, but looking over the you know, it's not even the medium term, over a one year period, we see that infrastructure is broadly doing what we'd expect it to do. That is uh, to, to, to b do better than broader markets when markets are falling, protecting capital essentially. Great. Um, and Europe's feeling the impact of surging energy prices and that's on the back of, of course, of sanctions against one of the world's biggest energy producers being Russia. Um, you've recently met with a couple of CEOs, I believe, one from a UK utility national grid and also from an Italian energy company, SNAM. What are the impacts of these escalating prices having on these companies, but also their customers and are the regulators reacting? Yeah, so when you think about uh, we, when we invest in utilities, um, uh, the nature of utilities is they're providing either water or energy. So we're going to talk particularly today about energy. And you can be providing electricity or you can be providing gas. That's really what uh, utilities are doing. Um, and utilities, if you think about the provision of either gas or electricity, there's the generation of the energy, the extraction of gas and the sale of the gas or the, ex or the generation of, of the electricity and the sale of the electricity. That's one thing. And then there's the transport of, of those commodities. Um, we invest in the transport of those commodities. The first two, uh, uh, the fluctuation of the price will influence you. So to be a, a seller of gas at the moment or a seller of electricity is probably a pretty good thing, um, but, uh, but it doesn't really impact the businesses that we invest in. The businesses that we invest in are the poles and wires that transport electricity across economies or the, the pipelines that transport gas across economies and they're regulated. And the regulation, for many investors, regulation is something they want to run from. We run towards it and we run towards it because it means that when times are tough, you can be confident you'll continue to earn a fair rate of return on your capital. Essentially, the legislation that exists around the world as it pertains to regulated utilities allows the regulated utility to earn a fair return on the capital invested. And the fair return today is probably around about 8 to 9% return on equity. So it doesn't really matter how much they're selling, that's what they should be earning over time. And National Grid and SNAM, two companies that you write, we've met with recently, are really good examples of that in that um, they both own, uh, SNAM is a pure play gas transmission company. It transports gas the length and breadth of Italy. Uh, National Grid owns electricity transmission, electricity distribution, so the poles and wires in the UK. And it also owns a US assets and it owns 40% uh, of the uh, gas transmission in the UK. Um, but that gas transmission business, like the SNAM business, has little or no impact from volume Volume accounts for probably less than 1% of their revenues. So it doesn't really matter if there's no gas going through the network, they still get revenue. Um, and the energy price itself has no impact upon what they're doing. So notwithstanding the fact that energy markets are in something of turmoil in, in the UK and in Europe, um, those impacts have little or no impact, on those, that those pricing uh, issues have little or no impact upon the earnings of the businesses that we've invested in. Um, in, in Europe um, and you know, we see, a, for, for exactly that reason, we see the long-term prospects of these companies as being pretty robust and pretty rigorous. So we're optimistic about the outlook for those companies. They too have become cheaper uh, along with most of our universe in the last uh, month or so, um, but the long-term earnings prospects of the business have not changed. Offa, the Northern Hemisphere summer's coming to an end and it's been a pretty tough, tough season for airline travel. We've heard so many complaints about delayed flights and baggage issues, etc. Are we getting any closer to a, a pre-COVID normal? And I'll also get you to comment on um, traffic on roads as well. Sure. Uh, from an airport's point of view, we are well ahead of where we expected to be this time last year. You know, as traffic has come back very, very quickly. That said, it's probably been a little bit less than we would have anticipated at the start of the summer. So summer capacity, for example, at a &E was scheduled to be more than 100% of 2019 levels ended up being less than that, around 8 or 9% less. 
overall. Um, that's because of these problems that airports have had and airlines have had in, in scheduling. You know, they've had problems getting pilots, they've had problems at getting slots at airports, etc. So it's been a drag, but we're still sort of well ahead of where we would have expected to be. And let me just step back a bit and break that down as well. So that we've seen recovery quite strong on the leisure focused side of the airports businesses. So AINA being the Spanish airport company, a lot of leisure focus there. a and doing very well. Again, I think August was minus 2.4% to 2019 levels. Again, very leisure focused, so, so very protected. You contrast that with a Fraport or, or a Zurich, have a lot more business travel. They're down 20, 25% still uh, on 2019 levels. So kind of playing out how we expect it, just kind of happen faster. We're looking forward now towards the winter season. Again, we're seeing scheduled capacity being above 2019 levels of leisure focused airports in particular. So a and is about 100, 304% ANA is, is above, around those same levels as well for winter. So again, we're confident that you know, recovery is happening. It's about getting the, the capacity of the airports and there's problem solved with the airports in terms of staffing, um, in terms of logistics to actually get that traffic on the ground. Um, Again, we're still confident that in the long term, those, those numbers are quite robust. On a toll road's point of view, it depends. Um, most of the toll road networks, so the big you know, French toll road networks, Spanish toll road networks, Italian toll road networks, are kind of back towards 2019 levels of traffic, and in fact, have been since the start of the year, or end of last year, in fact. Um, when you look at the urban toll roads, it kind of breaks down a bit more. So most of them are doing quite well, or at or above 2019 levels of traffic. The exceptions there are the ones that take traffic to the airports. So air travel hasn't returned, you've lost some of that traffic naturally. And some of the ones that feed the CBDs, so a bit higher in commuter traffic, are still kind of falling a bit behind. So the double screenways of the world are still behind where they would have been um, historically. So um, it's a bit of a split, but certainly the traffic is recovered quickly on most of the toll roads out there at the moment. So more in line, yeah, basically in line with ACES. And going forward, are there any uh, sectors or regions that you're interested in and what's your outlook for 2023? Yeah. So it's been very volatile at the moment. That's given us opportunities. I think you know, around half a year, we would shift the portfolio more towards toll roads, given they're the most mechanistic uh, and most direct um, protection from inflation. In other words, you know, toll, uh, inflation goes up, you pass it through directly with, with tolls. Um, more recently, we started tilting the portfolio back towards utilities, and we're probably about half-half now. And in particular, we're looking at um, European utilities where the, the rate mechanism is more mechanistic. So again, very, very clear way of passing through that. We have confidence in the US that will happen. We'll get inflation protection, we'll get rate protection. It might be a slightly longer process where in Europe, is a very mechanistic process to get there. So it's a slight shift. Uh, and also we've seen in the valuations fall a lot in Europe. As Gerald touched on, everything's been sold off. We think there's been oversold in certain markets and that's the, gives us the opportunity there. Looking forward to 2023, well, the actual stock prices uh, will depend a lot on what rates do over the next you know, 12 months. Um, we've seen a lot of volatility, you probably expect continued volatility in the next 12 months. The key thing to remember is underlying that, the earnings are very robust. We have a lot of confidence that the earnings are going to continue to be very strong. Um, and, and basically in line with thesis, we have you know, very robust underlying cash flows from demand for, for air travel, from utility growth in terms of the CapEx programs. And that's all flowing through and all expected to continue. Um, notwithstanding that, again, you do get volatility, but that provides opportunities for us. Um, it's also worth considering that if we do get a, a recession, infrastructure is going to be a great place to be protected as an investor because the cash flows are so robust that you know, demand for, for water doesn't fall. You know, demand for electricity, gas can make them off a little bit, but you're protected, you're not exposed to the volume. So you're, again, you're protected from a cash flow point of view. And if we do get a recessionary environment, the policy response is probably going to be to, to soften rates or at least pause rate increases. Again, that'll be supportive of infrastructure. So, um, there's a lot of moving parts, but ultimately at the underlying level, the businesses are, are quite quite sound and we're quite confident in their earnings. Thanks, Offa. And thank you, Gerald. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. And thank you all for watching. We hope you found this discussion useful. As always, please feel free to share this update with clients and colleagues as you see fit. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to the Magellan distribution team or visit our website where you'll get more information, including stock stories and investment insights on the infrastructure strategy. Take care as always.